And she is dispensing postcard and some postcards and some humor to uh, passerbyers. So, what did you? How did you think of doing this? The postcard machine actually was born in Antarctica, ah. where I was working contract work, and we have a craft fair, and everyone sets up tables. And I had made like 80 or so postcards that were all different, and I wanted to sell them, but I wanted it to be sort of an interactive exchange For sure. and um, engage people in a different way rather than just have them walk past me. Way. Funny, yeah, and people really have a great time. Like, I like to make people laugh, so it's a really fun. Is it easy or hard to kind of transport this from where you're from to here? Well, the original postcard machine was actually made out of an enormous cardboard box. It was a tri wall, and it was about seven feet tall and it was impossible to transport it from Antarctica anywhere else. So the, the reason that I had this one made was so that I could take it on the road and go to different places. So actually this tent is a custom made outhouse tent. The original design is for an outhouse that you would use like camping and they retrofitted it for me and changed it. And I made all the patches and designs and then they changed certain things so that it would work for what what I was going to be right. using it for. So aside from just like getting your own custom booth, how have you kind of honed it over the years? Well, I've learned originally the idea was to make the postcards inside the machine, which uh, became impossible because the interaction became a lot more fun right. so that I could talk to people. So making one was just like, beep, please hold, beep, beep. Like, um, try, you know, I would try to hurry up and then the quality of the postcards wasn't as nice as right. if I just had them. Okay, right. And then I also have added things inside, like this rack to hold everything right? so that I can just grab them more easily and then I have this um, bullhorn here. Yeah, how did you think, because it makes you definitely sound more robotic. Yeah, and also this material is really hard to hear through. Oh, really? So originally I didn't really think I would need anything, an amplifier, but once I got it, it became obvious that you couldn't hear through it. So I needed something to amplify. And this is affectionately known as honky. And this is actually, um, yeah, this is from a band. The Lloyd Family Players loan it to me so that I can use That's it in the postcard machine. That's awesome. And so yeah. are you from Antarctica then? Like, well, you come here from I have, I'm from Minnesota originally. And right now I live in Oakland, California. So Antarctica is just a temporary place. It's a temporary place. And so yeah. you made the drive from there to here? I actually flew here. Sweet. This all fits into those two bags right there. Oh my god, really? So we can just roll it right up and then pack it and it's not a big deal. Can you carry it on even? Yeah. Oh my I, god. I actually checked it. Oh my god. But the idea is eventually to be able to pack it all up into one thing, self-contained, and then I could take it on my bike or something because it was meant to be really transportable. For sure. Are yeah. you planning on selling in stores or do you already sell in some stores? I don't right now and maybe. I'm definitely open to that, but mostly it's about sort of the performance and engaging For sure. with people. You kind of lose that, obviously, if you're just buying online or just buying yeah. in a store. Yep. Um, so, so how long have you been making postcards for? Well, I've sort of always collected postcards and worked on with mail and stuff like that um, but for specific things like this it's been about a couple of years I mean my whole life I've made postcards right. you know to send to people right. so um, so yeah it's sort of an evolution of that I actually see the postcards as like my own personal sketchbook yeah so it's just a way of doing sort of quick little ideas and kind of get them out um, uh, we did, we did, Machine's Choice. Excellent choice. <laughs> I cannot tell if you like whiskey or chickens better. <laughs> well, I'm kind of about whiskey and chickens. Yeah. You like whiskey and chickens? Yeah, yeah together. Hey, That's a good idea. Let's try whiskey first. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs>
Thanks. Hello. You are at the Coast Guard machine. Are you having fun? I'm here for all of your Coast Guard needs and desires. Do not be shy. I am from the future. All right, we're here with a very unique vendor today, Angelic Organic Learning Center, and they have some really neat projects that they do, especially with inner city women, and we are here to talk about that. Cool. Okay, so these are all hand, handmade soaps by who, again? So this is, um, these soaps are all handcrafted um, in small batches by low-income women in the Illinois and Wisconsin area for a living wage. And it's actually a, a product that's right for international. It's their um, basically a pilot project to begin supporting urban agriculture and urban agricultural projects. Um, they came to Chicago and said, you know, how can our our project be relevant here? And, and we've been working with them on a variety of levels. But in this one, um, women, mostly Latino, are making this soap, and they get paid a dollar a soap, which comes out to about ten to fifteen dollars an hour. Oh wow! Um, and and um, they're also just like a really close part of our community. Right. And it's a skill building project. It's a an educational project, and it's one of many projects that we do with different communities in urban and rural um, Illinois to help people become more self-sufficient and healthier right. through uh, growing vegetables and yeah. growing community and marketing their own goods. Right. And how would you get involved with the organization? How would you recommend if anybody's interested in getting involved? Well, absolutely come visit our website, www.learngrowconnect.org, or you can call us, 815-389-8455, um, to just find out how you can get involved. We have all sorts of workshops. We have a soap-making workshop. We have goat cheese-making workshops. You can come learn how to milk goats. You can bring your kids, bring yourself. We have um, training programs for young people or old people wanting to become or, you know, organic farmers and make the transition from city life to rural life. Uh, we have um, overnight campfires for the family. We have farm tours, potlucks. We have all sorts of different things. So definitely come on down. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you too. Have a wonderful time at the fair. You too. We're here with Avec Maman, which is with my hands in French, looking at some custom-made beautiful lamps. And this is the lady who does it all. Um, and so, what is your workshop like that you have you solder and then you also silver? Yeah, it's a, I solder a steel frame that holds the lamp and the bulb. And then I cut styrene, which is a typical lampshade material, and laminate um, custom-made, handmade um, silk screen onto the shades and then laminate them together and construct it. How long have you been doing this for? Um, the lamps for maybe about two years. I just started selling them very recently. Oh, really? Yeah. That's really neat. And so what were you doing before that kind of led you into um, lamping? My background is in architecture. Ah. Um, I have my undergraduate degree in that, and I worked in that for a while. And I'm kind of leaving the architectural world and going into more of the industrial design world. Oh, so awesome. I'm going to try to, after lamps, um, I'm interested in doing furniture and other sorts of functional objects. So Of course. And, and then how are these ones made compared to these? Um, these do not have a steel frame in them. They're simply styrene that's been twisted. And then there's a seam in the back, which you can't see because it's hidden by the other side. Yeah. And they're all subscreened as well. And then they have a fixture that hangs inside of them. What made you think of these shapes? Like, the shapes are very distinctive. Um, yeah, they're, um, when you make the lamp, if you were to unfold the seam, it would be a piece of paper. It's a completely flat piece of paper, and I'm really interested in geometry and, um, sort of mathematical things, and so it, it seemed like a pretty in, ingenious, very simple idea, but right. it seems kind of complicated, but it's actually rather simple, so. Yeah, because the body, it's just really interesting to see how it plays. Yeah, it's yeah, and it's, it's, it's completely structurally supportive of itself. I mean, the frame is in there to enforce the square, but it, it won't go anywhere if it's not there either. So. That's awesome. That's like the best, most beautiful math I've ever heard. Cool. All right. All right, guys, this is Andrea saying goodbye from the 2008 Renegade Craft Fair. Hope you had as much fun as I did. I want you to check out Venus's website, venusdean.com, and see you later.